Hi everyone and welcome back to Macaroon. In this video, I'm going to try making some buff bear bread, which you might have seen on Instagram. Full credit for the design goes to the creator, Konal Bread, and there's actually a squishy version of her creations as well. However, these look like Gashapon capsule toys, which means they're probably very difficult to find outside Japan. I also discovered a great article on how these buff bread animals came about, so I've linked that down below in case you want to know even more about the trend. For this DIY, I'm going to try several different squishy resins and coloring methods to see which one produces the best result. I also really wanted to make a Prusheen design based on this amazing illustration from Shen Comics on Instagram. So the first step to making any custom squishy is to create a model of your design. I like to use polymer clay for this part because it's heavy and easier to mold later on. This DIY reminds me a lot of one of my earliest tutorials where I made a latte art cat using clay. I find that making replica food items is fun because it looks most realistic when it's not 100% perfect. It's about finding a fine line between symmetry and that slightly irregular handmade look. When you're making this, it's important to smooth down all the edges so each piece is firmly attached. Now I'm just repeating the process with the Pusheen design, and I really like this Fimo Kids clay which I'm trying out for the first time. It feels softer than normal Fimo, and it's easier to sculpt and stick together. Then I bake these for 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius or 230 Fahrenheit. These are a lot more complex than my previous custom squishies, so I'm really hoping that the mold putty is going to be able to pick up all the details. Because it's quite thick, I'm using the sideways molding method here. First, create a ball of putty that's big enough for your entire piece and hold it in your palm like this. Then press the clay character sideways inside while pushing the silicone upward and around it. It's important that the putty ends up a bit higher than the top edge so you have the entire outline. I find this method really helps to reduce air bubbles and it can also pick up tiny details. It worked incredibly well here and there's a perfect impression of all the muscles inside. The only problem I had was that a piece of Prusheen's foot came off during demolding, which is the reason why the clay needs to be firmly attached before baking. For the casting part, I wasn't sure which colors or textures would work best, so I tried a whole bunch of things. First, I'm making a translucent grey colour using Sophie and Toffee's squishy gel, and this is obviously going to be for Pusheen. Then I made a translucent brown colour for the bear. This is a sort of medium beige colour, which I thought might be a good starting point for bread. Last but not least, I also mixed up a batch of Hitohara gel, and I kept it the default milky colour. This doesn't look like bread, but I thought maybe the white base will make it easier to add shading later on. When it came to demolding them, I realized that the Pusheen one was going to be a fail. It ended up far too soft, which was most likely due to the pigment interfering with the curing process. I also realized that grey wasn't the best color because it doesn't look like bread and it's also difficult to shade. This has a big rip down one side, so I decided to throw it out. The brown bear squishy was a bit firmer, but it was still kind of tricky getting it out. This mold has a lot of stress points, which are small sharp corners where the squishy is likely to stick or rip. I had to work very slowly and I managed to remove it in one piece. I figured that soft pastel dust was the best way for adding shading, since paint doesn't stick well to silicone. This lets me create gradual transitions that look more like bread and the powder is going to reduce the natural stickiness of the squishy. I started with the edge of the bread and I used white pigment to make it lighter. This transitions to a yellow colour and then a toasted golden brown on top. The final result looks pretty good, but it took such a long time to complete, almost an hour in total. I realised that using a mid-tone beige colour wasn't a good idea because it meant I had to add the highlights and shadow myself. A white base would be easier because I only need to add darker colours, and I can test this out using the Hitohara gel piece. This one is a bit firmer than I would have liked, but it did come out of the mold more easily. The shading went a lot faster this time because I only had to add the yellow and brown on top. Here's the final result, and the pastel dust looks more muted on the translucent squishy. 
I really like both of these, but it's definitely a lot less time consuming to use a milky white color as a base. So I decided to repeat this technique and make a new version of buff pusheen. The texture was perfect this time, and I used some of the talcum powder that comes with the Hitohada gel to reduce the stickiness. Funnily enough, I found that shading a squishy with pastel powder feels identical to applying eyeshadow. I'm pretty sure that a makeup brush would also work better for this than a paintbrush. The final details were added using acrylic paint, and our buff pusheen bun is done. I find these buff bread animals so hilarious, and they're basically destined to be turned into squishies. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please follow me on TikTok and YouTube Shorts for more. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!